biological process and intuition. And the intuition I mean here include how to get out of suffering or come up with ideas or be creative. Structure-wise, what I see is that at the root of who we are, I call it home base or unconscious part that we may not reach out by our mind. There's a treasure, there's a process of the universe, law of nature manifesting and functioning so that uh, the blood circulate Breathing the oxygen exchanges, CO2 get rid of, and the food processed. All that is happening. We may not realize it because we may be occupied in our mind, but that's who we are. So one, on one end is what's going on in the mind. On the other end is what's going on in the body. And beyond the body, too. So there's usually a gap in between, like a filter. And the filter gets narrower if we have our mind occupied in something, caught up in something. An example of that is the ego. But if we are relaxed, open, breathing freely, natural breathing, then we can accept and see much more. Just like looking at the piece of paper and you can look at the room and beyond. So we have this ability of narrow-sightedness to the broad-sightedness, if I call that. So those two universes I call mind and the rest, rest represented by the law of nature, and we are to navigate how to see how we are doing it so that we don't get into the trap. And of course we get into the trap because we have a limited intelligence or way of functioning. So the game is to see if we can expand our view outside and possibly have foresight so that you don't get into danger. Or if you have a problem like suffering, there's a way to get out of it. So it's a fairly complex process and it's a dynamic process. But the focus of this is about the biological process with some notion of varieties of activities that we may help ourselves if we know it. One is, let's start from breathing or heart beating or inner body sensation. If we can connect to that and be aware of it, even when our mind is functioning, in the back of our mind, those are happening. And instead of filtered, if we have the sense of, let's say if you listen to the crawl, or the bird chirping as I talk or as you listen, then you have that sense of what's going on externally or internally, if something is scratching or stomach is hurting, then you have better understanding of the holistic nature of what's going on. So real time, moment to moment awareness is important, but additionally, in relation to the biological process, I want to go through some list that I made. Simpler one is that if we know how the hormone um, performs, it helps us to know what's going on. If we don't, we may be more upset. For example, if we're upset in anger, for whatever reason, after 90 seconds of being quiet, let's say focusing on breathing or not paying attention to the anger, and if we can do that, after 90 seconds, exponentially, 
the effect of the hormone would go down. That's the biological fact. But if you repeat focusing on that anger, the object of anger, then 90 seconds goes another 90 seconds, you know, delaying it. And therefore, the anger may persist. So that's about the 90 second rule, I, let's call it, about anger. About judgment, three minutes is the basic rule. If you don't know what to do, don't make a judgment for three minutes. Or if you have a doubt, let's say you write the email and you wonder, you want to rush to send it because you want to get over with it. But typically, if you give time afterward and come back, that helps. I have the game, not often, but I play Spilling B, I think it's called. And they're like a seven alphabet letter you want to combine to make words. And more you make words out of that combination, you have higher point. In that game, if I stop doing it and give it time and then come back, usually new idea pop up. So whether it's three minutes or longer, depending upon the situation, that will be a help. In terms of facing the difficult problem, I mentioned elsewhere, Oka and Poankare, this is Nakayama-san, my mentor, developed idea. Okas used to say, that he's a mathematician, if you cannot solve the problem for three days, then he call it as a problem. What happens is that if you focus on a problem, you know, he can do it, focus on mathematical problem, let's say for three days, then you run out of what you can do with what you have in your mind. So if you are persisting, just focusing on certain issue for three days, usually you run out of the solution, then you call it that's a problem, in his case, Mr. Oka. But after three days, he says, usually the door opens as if from the unconscious to come up with a solution. You may have the writing block, I don't know what's the term, you cannot write well, or you delay and procrastinate, and at the last minute, you come up with a solution, because you may be practicing the same by delaying, or thinking, but not thinking totally. But if you focus on that trial of determining to go through for certain things for three days, then the door may open. In case of the vipassana, there are two segments. First segment is on breathing, three days and a half, and you get to certain level. And the next four days or so, no, seven days, will be on vipassana, inner body sensation. And you focus on the inner body sensation. So it could be three days or seven days, but more you can persist, they call it aditan, focused for determined effort for one hour or even three days or more, you come to the point of idea popping up. It's the idea of a shila samadhi panya. Shila is right conduct, like a monk, you go into the mountain and sit for 10 days. So that you have follow all the rules of not drinking or chatting or sexual issues that you go after, but focus and live like a monk life and focus for three days or 10 days. You know, it may vary depending upon the magnitude of the problem, that will be a way but it requires determination and focus and get out of the mind after spending time. So the meditation 
It's just the practice of doing it. You let the mind function and the thought pops up, you let go. You practice that for three days, 10 days. You go deeper into yourself and reach out to what's happening in unconscious where there's a treasure, the ideas may come up after synthesizing whatever is happening from your younger days and the memories of this and that, self-organize itself. So there's a term required and determined effort focus for a certain period. If I think about a sports, a painting, or music, a math science, or management, mastery takes time. So not just the idea, but if you're looking at the overall mastery, whether it's a surfing, a swordmanship, or anything that requires time and energy, it may be more than three months, three years, or even more. Also, it may depending upon what you may have experienced in early days. Just like a Picasso had his father into painting, and you know the story of the dentist, son tend to be a dentist, and the lawyer's son to be a lawyer, and the professor's son to be more into the mind in brain related activities. So there are certain issues that relate, and if you don't have those early life experience, the time requires to be a master may be different. In my case, I played the Go game. My father was not a good player. So I learned from him a bad habit. So I'm not a good player, but I'm doing fine at certain level. But I can't see that that's a limitation. As much as singing, I don't think my mother was a good singer, so I shouldn't complain. But it's a fact, or you can call it a biological fact, depending upon what you have in your early days. You have some head start or delayed start to be a master. Another thing about the biological issues that we should be aware of is going back to the goal game, or it could be chess, if you are playing and involved in the game, it's different from when you are the observer of the game from outside. In Japan, there's a saying that outsiders have one more rank higher than your ranking because you are more objective. The same idea of the mind caught up or more open and be able to see wide range of opportunities because you are not part of the um, uh, the person who got the impact, whether winning or losing. So you're going beyond the winning or losing, you know, dualism, but be open. Same as meditation, Siddha Samadhi Panya. If your mind is calm and quiet, you can figure out what to do. Lastly, I can talk about the repetition is mother of success. Of course, you want to aim for the right direction, but so far as you want to accomplish something, more you repeat, and you want to repeat in a manner like a Shida Samadhi Panya, or I call plan, do, check, act. There's a certain way to have a rhythm to reflect on what happened, what's going on, what happened, and figure out what's going on and decide what to do next. Your plan and do, exercise the, the plan and check the result and analyze, understand what happened, learn the lesson and move forward. So you want to continue doing this over and over. So there's a rhythm that you develop, like an exercise, physically or mentally, spiritually, we need to have that. So I have this idea called the black dot exercise or life profile as an example to do this idea of the repetition is the mother of success or mother of power. I can share with you. Thank you.